Praise God. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. Let's go to the scripture. We'll be reading from the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 11. Thank you for joining with us again as we are winding down on our missionary trip to Liberia. And we're just so thankful. We ask that you would continue to keep us in prayer for the revival and the pastor's conference that's going to be taking place over there. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 11. And let's begin reading Jesus speaking to his disciples about prayer. Prayer, very important subject in our walk with God. Let's look at picking up at verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because of his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. I say unto you, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knock, it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. I want to speak to you today concerning instead pray. Instead, pray. Hallelujah. God, will you help us, oh Lord? Lord, we're making our request to you right now. Hallelujah. God, Lord, there are a lot of things on the line right now, God. There are many things that need to be prayed about. Hallelujah, Lord. Not only in my life, but in others' lives. God, you said pray about everything, Lord. For you gave us the avenue of prayer, God. Let us stand on the boulevard of prayer, O Lord, and that we would empty out our hearts, O Lord, so that we won't be anxious for nothing, the Bible tells us in Philippians. He said, if you want to get rid of anxiety, you need to exercise the gift of prayer. He said, be anxious for nothing, but by all things, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will be in your hearts and in your mind. So God, Lord, give us an understanding, Lord. Oh, Lord, open up the eyes of our heart, God, that we would hear and see what you're trying to teach us, Lord, a about having an experience with prayer, God. Uh, oh, Lord, we're in the midst of 21 days of prayer now. Uh, as, Lord, we have winding down on another two weeks before we get on the plane, God, during a pandemic, God, uh, going to another country, oh, Lord. Uh, and so, Lord, uh, if there was ever a time... Uh, that we need huh, the benefits, the graces, and the mercies of prayer, it would be now. Hallelujah, oh Lord. Uh, so we're praying right now, God. Help us, oh Lord. Will you bless somebody, God, through this message uh, on prayer? Uh, instead, uh, instead of complaining, instead of talking to somebody else about it, instead of being discouraged about it, instead of running off into another place in a mindset, instead of being anxious, but instead, uh, pray about it. Uh, my God, will you help us? Let your request be made known unto God. Uh, I want to, in Jesus' name, I want to talk to you, church, concerning this subject on prayer, a very important part of our walk with God. You, you won't be able to get to know God any further without having some type of a prayer life. Uh, and, and if any of you who know that, Ascribe or subscribe to this channel regularly 
what I feel about prayer and what I know about prayer, and especially concerning men, is that when men don't pray, they become brutes. When men don't pray, they become brutes. But the fact of the matter is, anyone that doesn't pray will become a brute. They will begin to take things out on folks uh, because their heart is full of stuff. Uh, and God has given us prayer for the purpose of emptying out our heart. Oh, it's so very powerful as we're going to get into this thing. <laughs> Remember, every heart wants to be heard. Uh, but versus trying to get everyone to hear your thoughts, hear your opinions, hear your complaints, hear your requests. Uh, let it be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Because when we give it to God, that's where we have the most peace. Hallelujah. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God uh, and all of its righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Well, we know that one of the best ways to seek the Lord uh, is in prayer. Hallelujah. He said, seek my face. And the writer responded, your face will I seek. Hallelujah. God, give us, Lord, what we're going to need here concerning prayer. Prayer is a very powerful weapon. It allows us to travel. Oh, God, it allows our spirit to, to be able to go and to be able to move in the places and realms where we we may not even physically be able to go. Even when you're looking at the scripture that says, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, uh, watch it, availeth much. Uh, now, right there, that word availeth much means to conquer in the invisible. Let's say it again. So the effectual or prayer is effective. Uh, the effectual or the red hot burning prayer of the righteous uh, availeth much. Why? Because when it goes forth, uh, it is accomplished, it's accomplishing something. And oftentimes, as the Bible gives us numerous examples of the Lord receives the prayer or the Lord hears the prayer and he responds back. Uh, just like when Daniel uh, had went on to seek the Lord's face in 21 days of prayer and fasting. And then the angel came back and said, Daniel, uh, from the first time you have set your mind, your spirit to pray, he said, I had been sent back with the answer. Hallelujah. And, but he said, the prince of Persia, there be a spiritual warfare begin to take place. And this is important for us, church, to really understand that. Hallelujah. That there is a warfare that'll take place. And the only means oftentimes in our warfare, the only posture or the position you're going to be able to take and be effective is in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh my God, will you help us right now? We know that in the Bible uh, that the apostle Paul uh, had a dream or vision and someone was praying. Uh, and in that prayer, they were saying, come over here and help us. Uh, and so Paul switched his direction that he was going in. He was aiming for one city. He thought he was supposed to go there, but someone was praying somewhere else and they prayed Paul all the way to another city. Just like I believe that we are being prayed to Liberia. I believe there's somebody over there that's prayed us and prayed in a way that has caused the Lord to set it in our hearts for us to go there because we're not going there for offerings. We don't take offerings. We are offerings. We're going there because the will of God and the plan of God wants us to see something. Oh, there's something that God is saying, I need you to attach yourself to somebody over here because I'm going to be able to further my will and my plan. That's why one of the key things about prayer that makes prayer able to be successful, successful, successful is when you pray according to the will of God according to the will of God is so very powerful. And, and you'll find that in 1 John 5, 14. 1 John 5, 14. Let's go for a moment to the book of Luke again. But I like to focus your attention to Luke chapter 18 because we're going to be talking about shameless asking because oftentimes 
prayer. Prayer is a lot of things. There's different ways you can pray. There's different postures. Uh, there's different requirements, personal requirements, and even general requirements. When you're looking at prayer, dealing with prayer, there, there's answered prayer, and then there's times when when prayers are refused by God to be answered. Uh, and so we want to it, it just examine the whole thing and, and get into the whole meat of the matter about this thing called prayer. Hallelujah. And before we get into Acts, Luke 18, let's go to the reason that God won't answer prayers. It's a common reason that the Bible talks about it. And you can find it in many places. Let's look at just six of them quickly. Um, Psalm 66, 18 teaches us one of the reasons God won't answer prayers or could not answer prayers or refuse to answer it is be, according to Psalm 16, 66, 18, and that is sin. That is a sin, a willful, deliberate life of practicing sin, and you won't repent of it. Sin is one of the reasons God will not answer prayer. Number two, according to James 4 and 3, is because they ask with, with, with unpure motivations. Oftentimes, it's known as selfishness. Many times, when we're asking for something in prayer, when we're communicating with God, where we're requesting, where we're petitioning the Lord, he's looking to see what are the motivations of why do you want me to do this? And oftentimes, the Bible has revealed to us many that were asking, they, the Bible says they ask amiss because they were asking for unpure motives or selfishness. Also, again, in the book of James, the third thought on why God refuses to answer prayer sometime, and that's James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, and that is because when the person asks, they ask in doubt. They're asking in doubt or without faith or without a confidence in the person they're asking's testimony. So when you're in faith and when you're having faith, we know faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But when you're asking in faith, it requires you not to doubt concerning what you're talking to God about. And so some people's prayers don't get answered because they came in doubt. You see, they were asking in doubt. And remember, no one can put doubt on you. Even your own situation can't put doubt on you. Doubt, that word doubt, the word is ap oreo. That means it has to be downloaded. You have to download something that hinders you from asking in faith. That's why the word is ap oreo. Ap means to apply something. So when you're in doubt, you're applying something. What? Oreo. Oreo is just like the Oreo cookie. It has the two hard shells on the outside and it has the cream filling in the middle. So when you are in doubt, you are downloading the two hard cookie shells on the outside and the cream is in the middle, you have all the weapons, you have all the authority, you have anointing, you have all that you need. But when you apply doubt to your life, the situation can't apply doubt, the government can't apply doubt, the devil can't apply, the devil can't apply doubt to your life, only you can apply doubt. It's very powerful. When you apply doubt, when you download doubt, like you're downloading an app on your cell phone, you are putting pressure on yourself and not allowing yourself to use the weapons you currently have. That is the literal definition for the word ap oreo, which is translated into the word doubt. Hallelujah. So that's why the Bible says, if any man asks, let him not doubt. Hallelujah. Don't, don't let the devil get you to use your own doubt to stop you from receiving a prayer answered from God. Hallelujah. Number four, Proverbs chapter 28, 9 tells us another reason for unanswered prayer, and that is disobedience. Disobedience is not God's will. You want your will. And the Lord can be uh, looking to you. He's looking for your obedience. He's looking for your fear and your reverence to him on something, meaning to love, honor, serve, and obey. 
and you decide you want to do this other thing as a believer, you believe that you want to do this other thing, but God is like, look, I want to answer your prayer. I want to move on your behalf, but you're walking in disobedience right here. My God, if you are, you need to repent and turn back to the Lord. He'll forgive you. Come on, let's go. The next one is Proverbs 21. Let's look at it. Proverbs chapter 21. We'll come back to Luke 18. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 13. It's very important to look at another reason that God would not answer prayers. Proverbs 21, verse 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself but shall not be heard. That's called being inhuman. You see, pure religion and undefiled before the Father is this, to visit the widows, to visit the orphans, to visit the fatherless and, and those that are in their affliction. When you see them going through, when you see they don't have things, when you see they don't have the basic utensils or the basic instruments for life and educations and, and medicines. And that's a part of what we're going to Liberia for over here. We're getting ready to set up a medical missions program that will cover all of Africa. You just keep watching and you watch and see it's going to come to pass in Jesus name. I have a confident expectation of favorable condition coming our way, coming their way from another world. Every time for that is called hope. Uh, and so one of the another reasons why prayer oftentimes doesn't get answered uh, is according to Proverbs 21 verse 13. Uh, they keep stopping their ears. Uh, they keep acting like they don't see that people are in need. They act like they don't see people need food. They act like they don't see people need clothes. Uh, they act like they don't see that the poor can't even afford their education. And, and as we've been going back and forth to Africa here these 14 months, we've been there three times. And so we continue to, when we see a need, we begin to reach out and to help. And everything from helping some of those young girls go to school, even the young boys, to even supplying over 40 50 pastors with food that they didn't have during the pandemic huh? because we can't act like we don't see these things. They need some things. Oh, and I want to send a, a, a message and a greeting out to pastor in Ethiopia, Brother Wandi. We love you, man. You and your family, don't worry about it. That That's just what God calls us to do. Amen. When we become aware of that need, huh? God is going to come through. Why? Psalms 37 tells me like this in two verses. Uh, it says, the godly are givers. My God, I'll say it again. Psalm 37, you read it, it says it twice. It says, the godly are givers. Uh, if they keep taking, uh, that's not the spirit of love, that's lust. Uh, and God, I pray you'll continue to allow us to give. Uh, we'll go around the world. My wife and I, our ministry and our team, we will go around the world. Uh, and when we find a need, uh, when we find the cry of the poor, we will not ignore it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, because he says, you shall not be heard when you cry yourself. Why? You ignore the cry of the poor. In Jesus' name, come on. Don't even put me in a ministry that's not helping the poor. I couldn't even, if I wasn't even a pastor, I, I can't. I can't function in a place where we're not helping the poor. I can't function in a place where we're not reaching out to the fatherless, to the uh, to the uh, those that are destitute, those that are hurt, those that are in their affliction, and the widows and the orphans. In Jesus' name, let's go a little further. We got two more, uh, uh, one more, if you will. Another issue where God doesn't answer the prayer or he would refuse the answer to the prayer. That's in Luke 18, which is good because we're going back to Luke 18. Let's look around verse 11 first. Verses 11 through 14. Notice 
we might as well go ahead and pick it up where we want, where we were going to go. Luke 11, 18, 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint and give up. Let me just say something right now about our 6 a.m. men's prayer. It is red hot. It's on fire. And But you know what? In one part of the house, my, my team of men, we're on that uh, prayer conference line at 6 a.m. every morning. Huh? And I was so blessed uh, that on Saturday morning, huh, I didn't get to make it. But I, when I found out our men were up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., praying from 6 to 7, it did my heart so well as a pastor. You don't know, it's like pouring water on my hands. It, it was such a blessing. On a Saturday morning, men were up at 5 and 6 in the morning praying. These men that I'm praying with every morning, these are some mighty men of valor. They're pulling things down in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then my wife and her team, they're on the line at 5 a.m. So praying from Five to seven, oh my God. And I'm talking about, it sounds like there's thunder going on in that room huh, when she be in that room. And they've been having this going on many, many, many months before COVID even came. Hallelujah. Huh? And I believe huh, that there's so much happening because we know that a lot happens. Uh, the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous of Beleth much. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. I, I hear her in there praying at 5 a.m. and they're praying and I'm like, I usually take her coffee every morning, but I'm like, no, don't interrupt that right now. Why? Because she's bombarding heaven, my God. And then, you know, like in any war, one of the things they do is they send the airplanes to drop bombs on everything. And this is what be happening when they're in the prayer. When we're in the prayer, oh, we're bombarding in heaven, we're dropping bombs on the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. We're dropping bombs on his camp. Why? Because we're bombarding heaven. We're saying, Lord God, hear my prayer. Hear my request. Hear my plea. Hear my request. My uh, supplication, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, we're calling on you right now. In Jesus' name. Let's go back to Luke chapter 18. Picking up at verse 2. Saying, talking about a parable. There was in a city a judge with fear not God, neither regardeth man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, uh -huh. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worried me. My God. See, that's the very powerful thing that's within prayer because there's something in prayer that's called importunity. Huh? When in prayer, we have the opportunity for importunity. My God. Importunity means shameless asking. Huh? I don't care what it sounds like. Huh? I don't care who see me. Huh? I don't care how foolish I look. Huh? I don't care how loud I am. Maybe you may not be loud. You don't always have to be loud. Huh? But the Bible tells me that Hannah huh, prayed in the temple huh, and the priest didn't hear her saying a word, but he saw her lips moving. Hallelujah. Huh? But I'm here to tell you, she was in there shamelessly asking, huh? shamelessly petitioning the Lord. Huh? And according to Luke 18, verse 5, huh? yet because this woman troubleth me, huh? you see, when you go in there and you shamelessly ask the Lord, huh? say my children, say my husband, say my wife, say my grandchildren, save our country, huh? Save those around me. Huh? Save those I just came in contact with. Save my old angry mean supervisor. Huh? Save my mama. Save my daddy. Huh? Oh, just shamelessly ask. Don't even worry about what you look like. Huh? I don't care if you look shameful to them. Huh? You just go in there and keep bombarding heaven. Huh? You keep going in there and 
pressing uh, and putting pressure on the enemy's camp. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, Father, I thank you for the prayer uh, in this home, God. Uh, I pray that other homes uh, will take up the mantle of prayer. Uh, they would grab it and say, you know what? Uh, starting today, this house, uh, we will be a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, Jesus got upset with him. He said, you're turning my father's house into a den of thieves. Uh, he said, but it will be a house of prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, uh, right now. Uh, oh, let's look a little further at Luke 18. Let's go around verse 6. Uh, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Wouldn't he avenge us more speedily and quickly? We are his chosen. He said, which crieth, uh, which prayeth uh, day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Your, your answer is coming speedily. Uh, nevertheless, uh, when the Son of Man coming, uh, shall he find faith on the earth? Uh, shall he find people with enough faith uh, to get up and pray uh, while it's still dark uh, every day? Uh, not that it makes us anything, uh, but it makes us humble. It allows us to be honest with God. Uh, it allows us to have a pure heart. Uh, it allows us to not fight man and to wrestle with people, but instead, uh, we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to continue to pray. My God, will you help us right now, God, um, concerning some general requirements of prayer, according to scripture, uh, there are what we call general requirements, uh, and that is in Matthew 6, 14, uh, having a forgiving spirit. The Lord wants you to have a forgiving spirit. Let's Look at that. That's why in prayer, the Lord uh, will cause your spirit to be forgiving and you won't be able to hold grudges and hold other things against people. He said in verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, uh, your heavenly father uh, will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, uh, neither will your father forgive your trespasses, my God. Huh? So we know that a very general requirement is in going to prayer and instead having an experience in prayer is because prayer is going to show you your own heart. <laughs> it's going to show you anything. It's going to show you whoever you pray about. Huh? They don't even have to tell you. As soon as you start calling their name, God's going to let down and reveal some things about their situation to you. Why? Because you're praying for them. You're interceding for them. Let's go a little further. According to the Luke 18 verses 10 through 14, let's look at something else about prayer there. Hallelujah. Luke 18 Starting around verses 10, we're going to go all the way to verse 14. Two men went up to the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, saying within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector, verse 12. I fast, look at his pride, twice a week. I give tithe of all that I possess. And the publican standing far off or the other person would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, forgive me. Be merciful to me, Lord. I'm a sinner. Verse 14 tells us something very powerful there. I tell you, this man, talking about the publican, went down to the house justified rather than the other men. For everyone that exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. My God, huh? we know some general requirements huh, for prayer huh, are humility and repentance. Huh? Humility is, uh, I have all dependence on God, huh? not on my education, huh? not on my pedigree, huh? not on what denomination I am, huh? not on how much money I have, huh? but I got all dependence on God, huh? which is the epitome 
of humility. I depend on the Lord and nothing else. My God, let's look at Matthew chapter 18, still talking about some very important requirements of prayer and which are should be inside of our prayer. Matthew chapter 18. Let's look at a verse 19, if you will. Hallelujah. Verse 19, my God. And again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father which are in heaven. Ha <laughs> ha. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for being in the midst. This has to do with the unity of the believers. And when you find believers that can't be in unity, when you find believers that can't come together with other believers, uh, I can show you and assure you their prayers will be slowed down. Their prayers will be hindered. Why? Because they have a problem with being in relationship with others. Uh, do you see? Because we are the body. Hallelujah. Uh, the eye can't say to the foot, I have no need of you. Uh, we are the body. Uh, and if you want to see prayers, uh, answered all over the place. Uh, you must look for unity in Jesus name. Uh, that's why the Bible tells us on the day of Pentecost, uh, the day the church was born, uh, they were all together in one mind and one accord. Uh, they were in that room praying for up to two weeks uh, in the upper room. Uh, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and they were filled with the Holy Ghost cloven tongues as of a fire sat on each one of them as they sat in the room and prayed in unity. Oh, that's why we need that unity. My God, tenacity. Huh? Oh, something else that's a general requirement. Matthew 11, verse 24. Matthew 11, verse 24. These are requirements. You can't skip over them. You could try and run your own walk with God if you want to, but you'll never be able to eat the fruit and the benefit because you keep doing it your own way. But God gives you pastors. He gives you teachers. He gives you prophets, evangelists, apostles. He gives you the people for the maturing, for the edifying of yourselves. You don't know how to do it. You don't know how to stay married. You don't know how to stay in joy and peace. I didn't until I started to listen to my pastor and begin to follow his teaching, my wife and I. And here we are now with 25 years of this thing under our belts. But we listened to his teaching. We listened to what he told us. We didn't run around six and seven different ministries. and We listened to the one and our lives have been extremely blessed. Every part of our lives have prospered, hallelujah, from our family to all areas in Jesus' name. Oh, let's go a little further. Mark, let's, we want to go to Mark 11, Mark 11, 24. I said Matthew 11, but I really want to go to Mark, hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Take us to Mark 11, verse 24. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mark 11, verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe it. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. My God, that is another basic requirement of general requirement of prayer. Instead, pray, and that is a confident expectation. Huh? That's even based on the definition of hope. Huh? Before you even go to prayer, huh, you should be like somebody running, get out of my way. I got to get to prayer. Leave me, excuse me. I don't, the bus is late. Well, I walked in. It's all right. I got to get to prayer because I'm expecting the Lord to do something. Huh? Ain't nobody here. Look, I'll give you $10 to drive me to prayer. I just got to get to prayer. Hallelujah. Huh? I'll never forget a sister in our ministry, and they told her she had cancer. She was diagnosed with cancer. By the time I got to the church, the lady was at the front door. She didn't beat me there on the bus. The lady was at the front door, you see, because she prayed that cancer. We prayed that cancer out of her. Hallelujah. In Jesus. Now, I know the doctors did what they did, but I believe that prayer was associated with it, and it got that spirit from around here. But she had a confident 
expectation that if she kept calling on the Lord, that if she kept shamelessly asking, something was going to happen. I thank you for it, Lord, for her importunity, which was her opportunity for God to step in and do something. First Thessalonians 5, 17 tells me to pray, to pray unceasingly. Do not cease from praying. Huh? Matthew chapter 7, let's go there. Matthew 7 and 7, important scripture for us today. Matthew 7 and 7, in Jesus' name. Look at it. Ask, and it shall be given unto you, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. A part of one of our main scripture that we were given today. That scripture is very powerful. Huh? When it says knock, when it says knock, huh? That literally means to collide. Oh, it means when you're coming there and you're asking, you don't just come in there asking like this, a little tap on the door. No, you come in there with full board. Boom! God, here I am. Lord, here's my situation. God, you see what's going on. The enemy is surrounding me. Lord God, hallelujah. Open the door. Avenge me of my adversary. That's how you knock on the door. That's how you knock to get it open. Not barely open the door. If the devil chasing you, they trying to kill you, you're not going to tap on the door barely. No, you're going to knock in desperation. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I'm looking for some folks to pray with us like that. Hallelujah. And then we know also from scripture, it tells us about a very powerful woman huh, in the Old Testament. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we're going to end it on her. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Very powerful scripture concerning this woman of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at verse 2. And this man had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. The name of the other one was Peniel. And Peniel had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts at Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkaniah offered his sacrifices, he gave to Peniel, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, a portion. Verse 5. But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah. My God. He loved Hannah. But she had no children. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Somebody, oh, you better get this because the Holy Spirit is talking about the womb of your spirit. I know he was talking about the womb right here of the woman, Hannah, the birth canal. But I felt something in the Holy Ghost for somebody uh, that your spirit has been shut up. Uh, but the Lord is saying, I want to impregnate you right now. Uh, I want to put something inside of you uh, that's going to cause you to have a birthing and a born again experience. Huh? The Lord is reaching for you right now. Huh? He's trying to marry you right now. Huh? He wants you and him to go into the inner room and to the secret place. Oh my God. Come on. You got to hear this. Verse six. Huh? And her adversaries also provoked her and Hannah sorely. For to make her fret, they tried to make her anxious and anxiety and make Try to make her get disjointed. Why? Because she didn't have any children and they would make fun of her. Uh huh. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. Watch this. Verse 7. And as he did so year by year, the husband, when, he, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so he provoked her. Therefore, she weeped. And did not eat. She's like, I don't know why I'm not having no child. I don't know why I'm not having the baby. Verse 8. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? 
And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? He was trying to console her because she was like, I want a child from the Lord. He was very special to them and powerful. She was like, I want a man child from the Lord. He was like, look, but you got me. Oh, but she was like, I, I, I need something from the Lord. And I'm speaking to somebody because the Holy Ghost is talking to you right now about something you need from the Lord. Hallelujah. And don't you settle for any substitutes. Verse 9. So Anna rose up early after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Here Hannah was going for prayer early. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sorely. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. You could pour your heart out to the Lord. That's a part of what prayer is about. Shameless asking. It ain't got to be cute. It could be loud or quiet. Just get in there and pour out your heart. If there's bitterness in there, if there's something in your heart, if a root of bitterness, the Bible says, have gotten in your heart, you got to get it out. And only prayer is going to take care of that thing. My God, let's go a little further. Verse 11, and she vowed a vow and said, Lord of hosts, hold it. The first time anybody used Lord of hosts in prayer was this woman. Very powerful. She used the term Lord of hosts. Why? I believe in the Holy Ghost uh, that while she was praying uh, and she'd been going to the Lord uh, and she'd been going year after year and nothing happened. Uh, I believe in the Holy Ghost. Uh, God told her in prayer, uh, change your prayer. Oh my God. We ain't going to be able to finish this. I believe. Uh, why? Uh, because this is the first person uh, in the Bible uh, that prayed to the Lord of hosts uh, or the Lord of the Lord's armies. Uh, oh my God. Uh, she said to the Lord uh, and she vowed a vow and said, oh Lord of hosts. She changed her prayer. She changed the way she prayed. Uh, she changed what she said in prayer. Uh, if thou indeed uh, look on the affliction of thy handmaid uh, and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, uh, but wilt thou give unto thy handmaid uh, a man child, then I will give unto you, Lord, the child all the days of his life. And we know that that child wind up being Samuel, uh, my God. Uh, and there shall no razor come upon his head. I believe as she kept going, the Lord kept dropping a portion in her. He kept dropping a part, taking in her. He kept allowing her to partake of the altar. And every time she went, he gave her another little piece and another little piece. See, this is what's happening to us when we're going to prayer at five and six in the morning. He's giving us another little piece. And then eventually, God's going to show you how to change your prayer. Oh my God. So that when she changed her prayer, she said, I will give him unto you, the Lord, all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. He focused on it. He looked. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, uh, and he was looking at her mouth, uh, trying to figure out what's going on with her. Uh, only her lips moved, uh, but her voice was not heard. Uh, if you pray in secret, he'll reward it openly. Therefore, uh, Eli thought she had been drunken. Uh, and Eli said unto her, how long uh, will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. And she was just getting all that sorrow out. Uh, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, uh, but have poured out my soul uh, before the Lord because that prayer is there so you can pour out your soul so you won't go crazy. Uh, if you don't pour out your soul, you're going to lose your mind uh, and you're going to wind up defeated, beat down. You're going to wind up a casualty of Satan. Verse 16. Count not thine handmaiden to be a daughter of Satan. She's like, I don't drink. 
I'm not a drinker. Don't count me as a daughter of Satan. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken thereunto. Eli says, uh, then Eli answered and said, go in peace. Notice uh, the man of God, uh, he puts his approval on her. Uh, go in peace uh, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And he said, uh, let thy handmaiden find grace in the sight of the Lord. Uh, so the woman went her way and did eat uh, and her heart continence was no more sad. You see how powerful this prayer is. You are not condemned to a life of depression, a life of sadness. That is impossible. That is impossible for you to admit or confess that I wouldn't even believe that. I wouldn't care who told you that. I wouldn't care who told you, well, it's all right to be sad. It's not all right to stay sad. You better get rid of that spirit. In Jesus' name, huh? because when she poured out her heart to the Lord, huh? and he heard her, verse 19, and they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah, oh my God, and Elkanah, knew Hannah, or he went into his wife, you know, and the Lord remembered Hannah. The Lord remembered her. The Lord remembered her. He said, right now, pow, here's the answer to that prayer. You're about to have a mad child, Hannah, because you waited on the Lord. Because you prayed unto the Lord. Because you emptied out your heart of bitterness, Hannah. Oh, you gave me all that you had, Hannah. And now I'm going to answer your prayer. Instead of complaining, instead of talking about the pastor, instead of talking about Christians in the church, instead pray, hallelujah, that the Lord may grant your request in Jesus' name. Verse 20, wherefore it came to pass when the time was come after Hannah had conceived uh, that she bare a son uh, and called his name Samuel. We know him as Samuel the prophet saying, because I have prayed, because I have asked him of the Lord. My God, I pray for you right now. I pray right now that you would begin to commit to having a prayer life. Not just having a church life, not just going to services, not having a complaint life, an anxiety life, a sad life, but no, God gave you prayer so your life and your soul would be at peace, so you could empty out your heart, so you could pour out your heart, huh? oh, and tell the Lord what's in it and what's going on. Huh? That's why you need to either do it privately huh, or you need to come together with others. Huh? Let me tell you how powerful this thing is, huh? and I'm going to end right here. You see, the word for prayer in the Greek is pro, sucho, mia, pro, sucho, mia. It means someone, spirit, or soul has gotten strength. The word pro is where we get the word to go forward in strength. The word sucho is where we get the word soul and psyche and the word mia means someone or only one. Every time we pray, your soul, your spirit is going forward in strength. I'm praying for you right now. Father, I'm praying for the lost. I'm praying for somebody that may not know you, God. I'm praying that this is an opportunity for them. Lord, that somebody can repent right now. That, that means you can make an about face. You could turn from your way. You could turn from a life of sin. And the Lord is saying, you know what? If you call on me, if you confess that me being the Lord and that you're born a sinner, every one of us were born sinners. For the Bible says that we all have sinned and come short of the glory, according to Romans 3.23. But the Lord is saying, I have made a way for you. That's why he put on war clothes. That's why Jesus, God manifested in the flesh, seen of angels, preached upon, received up into glory, and soon to return. He put on human flesh. He put on his earth suit. Even the name Jesus means Jehovah has become our savior. It means Jehovah has become our salvation. So Jehovah himself came down to earth uh, and said, I'm going to have to lay down my life for him. Uh, he said, no man take up my life, but I lay it down. Uh, he did that for you, friend of mine. He did that for you. And the Lord is wanting you now 
to call out to him. He's given us an avenue of prayer. He's given you grace and mercy. He's willing to forgive any and everything that you've ever done. You can have a clear conscience now. He wants to remit your sins and wash you, wash those sins away in baptism. The Lord is calling for you right now. Will you admit Will you confess, Lord, God, forgive me. I need you. Lord, I repent of my sins, God. I know that I've been guilty. And I know if I die today, Lord, I won't make it into heaven unless I turn and repent and confess the Lord as my Lord and Savior. And all that he did, the Lord is asking you now, why don't you believe the gospel, the death, the de burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and the second coming. Then you could be baptized. Then you could come into the covenant with God. Oh, huh? Then you could be risen and you could rise again like the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection. If you repent, that's the death. If you are buried, huh, that's you going down in the waters of baptism. And then if you would just come up to the newness of life, that's you rising out of the grave, leaving the dead man, the old man there, and all those sins. Huh. Look, the Lord is calling you right now. He said, I'm, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly and easily to be entreated, and you will find rest into your soul. And then you need to find someone and say, you know what? I, I confess my sins to the Lord. Now I need to get baptized in the name of Jesus, like they did in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Like they did when the church first began. And the church has gotten away from it because they tried to put the book of Acts as if it happened after the Gospels. But the truth is, the book of Acts happened before the Gospels were ever written. Hello? This is what you got to get in your soul or else you won't understand it. You'll be in the in the Gospels thinking something, but it, it all took place after the book of Acts and after the church was born and it was on fire and they were running around from place to place with signs, wonders, and miracles following them. Because why? They preached the apostles' doctrine. Huh? They preached Jesus uh, and they preached baptism in Jesus' name. And something happened. You need to find somebody, connect to, and say, look, will you baptize me in Jesus' name? Just like they did in the Bible in four locations. I pray a blessing over your life, life right now in Jesus' name. I love you. We love you in Jesus' name.